Let's make fun of Timmy Turner. Timmy Turner. Hey, how are you? And welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Jacob Andrew Sharp, and gang, We've got a doozy of a video for you, okay? We've got a doozy, and you know what that means? We got a heap of nuggets in here. I gotta keep saying it. I said it once, and now I have to say it forever. There's nuggets in here, okay? Does that make you happy? Does it make you happy I said it again? Are you happy? Are you happy now, God? Is this what you wanted for me to do this? Is this what I'm here for? Why am I here? Are you happy now, God? God damn it. What the f*** am I doing? What is this all for, God? What is this all for? Answer me, please. <laughs> Answer me, please, God. <laughs> I don't know what to do. God-flavored nuggets. Oh, yeah. And that's, well, that's actually what kind of what we're here to talk about. Fairly God Parents Flavored Nuggets. We're going to be taking a look at the brand new live action Fairly Odd Parents TV show. That's right. They took another piece of my childhood and they put real people in it and I hate it. You can find it on Paramount Plus, which is a real streaming service. I want to be clear. We are not going to be taking a look at the Fairly Odd Parents live action movie that stars Drake Bell because that guy is a Fairly Odd criminal. Sorry, Drake. I don't think Cosmo and Wanda are gonna get you out of this one, you stupid pervert. Maybe think about that next time you try to prey on minors, you creepy loser. Timmy Turner, more like grooming minors. It's gonna take some time to commit a crime. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Jake, Drake Bell's a bad guy. Just go look it up. Go look up Drake Bell, bad guy, and you'll find out that uh, he's, uh, he's yuck. Convicted child stars aside, this new live action TV show is fairly odder than its cartoon predecessor. Every time I say fairly odder, it sounds like I'm saying like there's an otter in the show now. Like the show is just about otters who can grant wishes. Actually sounds way better than the actual product we got. And to all the millennials that keep suggesting live action remakes of nostalgic shows just so we can relieve ourselves of our impending doom and that we're getting older and no one cares, we gotta stop. Let's just be old and irrelevant. Let's remake Danny Phantom into a CW show. Show. We could make Danny Phantom really dark and mysterious. We could make Danny a ghost who's addicted to heroin. We could do that. Or you could just take your lower back medication and go back to bed because you're in your mid-30s. Curse you, Gen Z. You know, I invented YOLO back in my day. See, I can't just see another cartoon from my childhood turn into this weird fever dream where it's just classic beloved cartoon characters dabbing. <laughs> I don't care how much money you throw at something and how many pop culture references you make. I don't need lines like this. No, sister, let's go! Now, maybe I'm too old to watch this. No, I am too old to watch something like this. But I could see an actual child watching this TV show, pooping their pants and throwing it at the TV. And I grew up with this show, so I feel like I have a little bit to say. So welcome back to an episode of an old millennial gets pissed off because they keep remaking stuff from my childhood, but they're making it not so good. So we're reintroduced to the cartoon we all know and love. The show revolves around Timmy Turner, an average boy who lives a really plain life until he wishes he had fairy godparents. And then poof, we're introduced to Cosmo and Wanda, his two lovable and adorable and actually super funny fairy godparents. So the show basically follows Timmy around as the pink and green haired fairies grant every one of Timmy's wishes. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but they get Timmy through things like evil teachers, weird parents, and middle school crushes. We fall in love with characters like Mr. Crocker, Chester and AJ, his evil babysitter Vicky, and the show is super fun, and it was a very groundbreaking show for its time. But Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odd Otter has Timmy Turner as an otter. Just kidding. The new twist is that Timmy Turner's all grown up and he doesn't really need Cosmo and Wanda anymore because he's heading off to college. Best fairy godparents a kid could ever ask for. Ah! Uh, what do you mean we were, sport? Uh, I mean, I am headed off to uh, college now. God damn it. <laughs> 
I hate it. I hate it. I, I hate it. I hate it. That's not Timmy Turner. No way. I don't like him as Timmy Turner. I'm sorry. That might be mean, but ugh, I really didn't want to see Timmy Turner going off to college. Also, there's no way this guy is going off to college, right? Maybe he's going back as a mature student, or maybe he's going back for like his fifth degree, because there's no way this guy's in his late teens. This guy is definitely in his like mid thirties and going through a divorce. Look at his eyes. Those are my life is falling apart eyes. He looks like he bought a Thrasher t-shirt to relate to his stepson. He looks like a swim instructor at like the YMCA. He straight up looks like a guy who did a bunch of ecstasy and now he can't stop talking about fairy godparents. So uh, this is Cosmo and Wanda. Uh, they grant my every wish. They have the same hair as Hot Topic employees, and they made me into a cartoon boy. Designer wrote a song about me. Yeah, yeah, Designer wrote a song about me. Fairy Godparents! <laughs> Dude, also, why the chain on Timmy? I... <laughs> Just a thick silver chain. What? Okay, everybody, so how are we gonna show that Timmy Turner has all grown up? Uh, a, a, a beard. How about a title card that shows how much time has passed? Mm, maybe we could do new perspectives and strong dialogue and maybe some good character development? How about a 35 year old who pretends to be 17, but he's wearing a really cool sterling silver chain? With a medallion? Uh, no, just like a pretty thick chain. I, I like that silver idea. That's actually a pretty cool. good wow. idea. That's, that's actually, wow, that's really I like that. A, a chain? Okay. Also, weirdest school reference ever. He's going to Princeton. Princeton! <laughs> Is that like a weird Ivy League product placement? I don't get it. See, I don't really need to see Timmy Turner right before he drops out of his sociology degree. Like Timmy looks like he's about to drink bong water for a dare. <laughs> I'm sorry, a few, I got a few more. He looks like a guy who's gonna take a woman's study course to get chicks. He looks like he's gonna major in conspiracy theories and minor in longboarding. The show opens with Timmy saying that he's going to go to college and Cosmo and Wanda, they can't come with him. He's outgrown them, but Timmy isn't gonna abandon them. His old cousin Viv is coming to Dimsdale. He's worried about her. So he wants Cosmo and Wanda to stay with Viv. But you can't just give us away to someone else. It's against the rules. But it's okay because Jorgen von Strangle, famous Arnold Schwarzenegger character that we love from the cartoon, he approved it. He approved that it's totally cool, even though it's not in the rules, as long as no one sees him do it. But Jorgen von Strangle might have made a mistake or two because he was kind of distracted because he was streaming on Twitch, I guess. I'm busy playing zombie unicorn attack, but yeah, you can give them away. <sighs> Cause that's all young kids do anyways, right? It's so apparent how disconnected the writer's room is. For example, we see Viv's new stepbrother, Roy, and he's a charismatic young jock type character and he's beloved by everybody. But the way they try to make him relatable is by giving him this catchphrase. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, like streamers do. Am I right, Gen Z? Twitch good, we get it. Fairly odd parents? Mmm, I don't know if I can relate to that. Maybe you should have made it epic pog parents. Dude, I'm absolutely sick of not being able to watch the TV shows that I want to watch. I'm so done with seeing these little error codes that say, this isn't available in your country. Shut up. Hey, Netflix, just show me the shows that I love, okay? Now, I'm sure Netflix didn't hear me, but you know who did hear me? Today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. And that's why I constantly use ExpressVPN. Now, if you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network that secures your data and allows you to do things like shop online safely, keep your online activity discreet, and even change your IP address location so you can watch the content that's unavailable to you. Gang, I live in Canada, which is great. But what sucks is that when I log on to my Canadian Netflix, I can't watch my favorite show, Zach Stone is gonna be famous. 
But thanks to ExpressVPN, just one click, bing, bang, boom, I'm logged into American Netflix. And now I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy my favorite Bo Burnham goofs. And with hundreds of available countries to change your location to, there is so much content that is just a click away. It's kind of like a free trip, honestly. What, you want to go to the UK and watch the Blair Witch Project? Uh, click? Now you're in London and you're getting absolutely spooky. But that's why I love ExpressVPN. It's so reliable and so easy to use. Dude, even when I'm doing something as easy as online shopping, ExpressVPN keeps my information completely secure from things like pesky little hackers. <laughs> ExpressVPN creates a tunnel between your device and the internet by encrypting your important data. And it gets even better. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash nuggets or by clicking the link in the description below. That's expressvpn.com slash nuggets. And guys, supporting today's sponsor also helps the channel so I can keep making videos for you. So thank you so much for sponsoring the video ExpressVPN and thank you as always for the nuggets. Okay, I will say though, I do like that Cosmo and Wanda are voiced by the original actors. I think that's really fun. And we get a lot of classic Fairly Odd Parents comedy. But it's combined with this like awful Disney Channel acting. Let's go back to the emergency room that is because I think I broke some ribs. At least when like a cartoon gets injured, we can laugh at it because it's not real. Don't show kids that it's okay to stand on their skylight and they'll just like magically fall onto a flight of stairs and they'll be totally fine. If Roy actually fell from that high, he would have glass in his eyeballs and all of his bones would be broken. It at least would have like knocked the wind out of him. <laughs> I think that maybe we shouldn't make the show. And like, if you're gonna make them act like cartoon characters, just make it a cartoon. That way we don't have to look at Viv's dad. Yuck. His name's Ty Turner. Of course his name's Ty. A blue suit with a yellow shirt. That guy is named Ty, for sure. Doesn't want to go by Tyler, because he's an old dad. He looks like a car salesman dipped in Vaseline. Butch Hartman, like, suggested he would play the dad, but then the producers looked at him and they went, ugh, no. But then they just found that actor who looks like Butch Hartman if he was made out of silly putty. Uncle Ty and his daughter Viv have just moved to Dimsdale, and Viv is being introduced introduced to her new stepmom and stepbrother that she's never met before, and she's a little pissed off because dad actually lied to her. Okay, do you expect me to apologize for reconnecting with my high school sweetheart last week, marrying her on a whim, quitting my job, selling her house in Oldsburg, and moving to Dimsdale to live with them? Because now that I say it out loud, I realize that was nuts, so I will. I'm sorry. Wow, check out that exposition. Viv is a little ticked off because her dad actually promised that they would be moving to a nice quiet farm and she would be surrounded by farm animals and books. That's a real line in the show. You did say we were moving to a farm. A nice, quiet farm where I'd be surrounded by animals and books. Everybody knows that when you're on a farm, there's a bunch of chickens reading the dictionary. <laughs> but Daddy Ty lied. He's actually here to open up a dance studio with his new wife, Rachel. And these two dancing kooks couldn't get any kookier. And after she meets her new stepbrother, Roy, he actually ends up shutting down the surprise welcome party he had for Viv because Viv is actually a self-proclaimed introvert. And she doesn't really like surprises and then we get the weirdest father-daughter dance of all time okay guess we're dancing now oh ty you were right she is great and the father-daughter dance ends in Roy falling off a ladder and breaking his leg. And that means that he's gonna miss the big basketball game. Now, I, I find it hard to believe that you're actually an introvert with all those whirls and twirls there, Viv. It's finished! But leave it to this show to not have so much continuity. Uh, we're also introduced to the weirdest character in the show, Xena. She just takes pictures of Roy uh, without him knowing, and she's doing it with the first camera ever made, but it's all because she thinks Roy's pretty cute. Isn't he gorgeous? He's my stepbrother. Too bad for you. Hey! Write better roles for female characters, you idiots. Not every comic relief female character needs to be this hysterical, goofy girl who's always fonding over a boy. She doesn't need to be the Peter Parker of that 11-year-old kid. Uh, 
Can I take your picture? And oh my god, just so much exposition and a really bad plot line. Maybe because ballroom dancing is your passion, because you moved to Dimsdale to open a ballroom dance studio with your new wife, and because you love making me ballroom dance with you? Yes, I'm an amazing father. Thank you for noticing. This summer, fairies. A 50-year-old guy playing a teen, and a dad who lied to his kid about going to a farm just so he could open up a ballroom dance studio. Even though his kid hates dancing. This summer, Paramount Plus presents more TV that ruins Jacob's childhood. And then finally we get the intro credits and the intro song 12 minutes into the show. Wow, it sucks. I would much rather either see it all in cartoon or all in real life. So, you know, we don't get scenes like this. That wasn't the plan, Jimmy. You'll probably fail without us. You bet I will. So long, sport. Goodbye, Jimmy. We're, We're happy, happy to, to see, see you go. go. Dude... <laughs> Whoa, what an actor that guy is. And then as Timmy is turnering his fairy godparents over to Viv, Roy falls through the skylight. At that moment, he gets a glimpse of Cosmo and Wanda. Uh-oh. And then Jorgen von Strangle hops through a portal. He's like, okay, you guys screwed up. Now you're gonna have to share Cosmo and Wanda. They're gonna have to take turns making wishes. Now, I actually think that's a fun dynamic and I think that's a decent idea for the plot of the show. I just wish that the show wasn't so poorly written. And I wish that that plot line didn't take, I don't know, half of the episode to get to. Timmy runs off to a retirement home. Sorry, no, runs off to college. And then we have Roy and Viv testing out, you know, what kind of wishes can they make? So they wish for things like a new room, lots of cake, and even gold pants. These are maze ball. What? Absolutely zero regrets. Let us go. And Viv even wishes that her dad would stop dancing. I'm super on board with that. I actually think a lot of these gags would have done well in a cartoon format. Just because when it's real life, you're forcing the actors to overact just so you can sell the absurdity. But all that does is make the show unrelatable and super cringy. At least when it's animated, we can believe the absurdity and we can enjoy the ridiculous humor of the show. I mean, that's what Fairly Odd Parents is about. It's very campy. It has this self-awareness about it, but those jokes fall flat when every character's like, <gasps> Wait, what's going on? That's epic. Let's go. <laughs> also, uh, as soon as Timmy left, I started to like the show a bit more. <laughs> he actually might be my only issue with the show. And the rest of the episode is just filled with farm animal montages, dance numbers, and the weirdest cop character I've ever seen on TV. Sergeant Splits, you was too aware there's a law in Dimsdale that says you can't harbor no farm animals in your house? <laughs> Splits out. Man, what? <laughs> and it's all wrapped up with a really nice family-friendly ending. I guess wishes do come true. You're kind of different from everyone else around here, but I like that. I like you. I wish Viv's dad would dance again. But then the show uh, shows us the basketball game that Roy plays in. Roy is literally Michael Jordan in the 90s with the Chicago Bulls, dunking at 11 years old. I think now I understand why everyone in Dimsdale loves him because he's a freak of nature. If you ever meet a child that can dunk, give him gold pants immediately. Let's go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, maybe I'll make another one about episode two because we have characters like Vicky the evil babysitter to take a look at. And as much as I wanted to cover the rest of the show, I absolutely couldn't because this hurt me on a personal level. Hey millennials, let's just forget about our childhoods and then instead of writing bad TV, you guys can go play spike ball at the park and you can drink your little IPAs out of your awesome tote bags. Let's just give it up, we're old. Don't forget to check out my podcast, the Mr. Friendship Podcast. I, I also just released merch and I released uh, a new shirt for Brain Cancer Awareness Month and all the proceeds go to the Princess Margaret Cancer Center Brain Cancer Research Fund. And don't forget to like 
like and subscribe because liking the video always helps and subscribing to my channel guarantees you a lifetime supply of nuggets, okay? Nuggets like a guy making fun of another guy with a chain even though he's wearing a chain and I just realized that now. I have to go because I have to go start a career as a guy in his 30s playing a person in their teens. Okay, bye! Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome.